We're jumping into our discussion zone right above now. I have my co-host ready, Mami Abba, and who is full of love, and Hafiz, who has joined, who is not full of love. I mean, it's, it's just like putting uh, positive and negative together in the, <laughs> in the same space. But I just love the way Mami Abba is trying to get him into the love mood and get him to actually see the importance of love and I mean, get him into the Valentine celebration mood. We'll still continue with that, even behind the show. But like I mentioned, today's February 11th, and it's the International Day of Women and Girls in Science. And this day is actually marked to celebrate women and girls in science and basically to promote their equal access to the field. We know that women actually play an important role in science and technology. But even today... They only represent a small percentage of the world's researchers. Well, according to the United Nations, you actually have from the year 2014 to the year 2016, less than 30% of the world's researchers were women. And only 30% of female students pursued the STEM courses, science, technology, engineering and mathematics in higher education. So we know that we had biases and stereotypes that were holding some women back. Some of them too was the lack of access, the lack of opportunity to actually pursue fields in science. And this has, has become a problem. But we're excited that day has been set aside to put the spotlight on these people, to bring them and to encourage others who actually have a desire or yearning to get into the field. And in light of that, I mean... Here at Africa Global Radio, we decided to reach out to an organization, Levers in Heels, and they are actually Africa's leading digital platform, and they are highlighting African women in the science, technology, engineering, and mathematics field. And they're doing so many things, initiatives, encouraging, mentoring, teaching, and bringing them on board. Also, they're reaching out to young girls who have a desire to actually pursue something in that course. So we spoke to the founder, Larissa Akrofi, and we're actually going to, just about a minute, I'll be playing. It was a recorded interview. We had to speak to her earlier today, so I'll be playing it. My team and I here would actually discuss. Don't forget, you can join the discussion on Facebook at Africa Global Radio, or on Twitter and Instagram at Af Global Radio. And you can directly send us a WhatsApp on your thoughts, your comments, your comments or suggestions as you also join us in the discussion on plus 233 So we'll be starting. And when you hear that's the voice of Larissa Akrofi. Today is actually the International Day for Women and Girls in Science. And we know how much of a big deal it is for women and girls to actually be operating or stand in the science field and actually make exploits in that sector. So to have a day that is set aside to be celebrated and honored, I mean, honoring women who are in those fields, I think is a very important thing. Now, we want yeah. to find out, can you please tell us about your journey of Levers and Hills? Because one thing I know about Levers in Hills is you guys are highlighting African women in the science, technology and engineering and mathematics field, which is, I mean, it's unique and peculiar to what most people are doing. So could you tell us about your journey, I mean, of Levers okay. and Hills, how far you've come in achieving your mission? Okay. So first of all, I just want to say happy International Day of uh, Women and Girls in Science. Okay. Um, so with Levers and Hills, Levers and Hills was born out of uh, my very own curiosity um, in terms of trying to find out what other women and STEM where we're up to. So I studied engineering back in university and um, it was challenging in the sense that there were very few role models that I could look up to. Um, I think I had uh, just two two lectures and um, it was very difficult trying to identify as a woman in engineering just because of that. And I was also one of four females in our class of 40, 40 students. And so really, I was just trying to find out what other women in STEM were up to. And so I started talking to and interviewing um, other Ghanaian women in engineering and the technology field. And I was publishing it on my blog. And I realized that other 
young women were, were interested. They were reading the blog. They were getting inspired. And so I took it up a notch and started interviewing um, other women in STEM, but across Africa this time. And so that's really how um, it started. Well, that's... Well, so that that was actually the introduction part of the interview. Now, I'll bring you my co-host, Mamiaba and Hafiz, who have actually already joined us. One thing I took note was, I mean, in the class of over 40, it was just four of them that were women, four of them that were females. Hafiz? Yes, thank you very much. Uh, science and uh, engineering as a field. Now, uh, to start with, in, in the beginning, you mentioned some interesting statistics. Yeah. Now, if I can just quickly go over them sure. to be more specific. Mm -hmm. Actually, look, according to the UNESCO Institute of Statistics, 53% mm -hmm. of undergraduate science enrollments are female. Mm -hmm. Now, when you go higher up on the ladder, must, at the master's level, mm -hmm. you have 55%. That's mm -hmm. encouraging. Yeah. Now, at the PhD level, it drops to 44%. Mm -hmm. Now, at the workplace, here's where it gets interesting. The actual figure you quoted, was, you said it was less than 30%. The actual figure is actually 29.1% of women at the workplace. So that means, I mean, with the increased number at so, the steady level, when it actually gets to the practical field, it drops. So the question is, where are the women? Yeah. Where did they go to? Now, in fact, you see, a lot of the time when they talk about uh, very few women in the science uh, field, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people want to talk about how you know, it's all about trying to strike a work-life balance for mm -hmm. a lot of women. So that's practically the, or that's basically the reason that a lot of them tend to drop out. Yeah. But the thing is, behind the scenes, there are far more bigger issues than that. Mm -hmm. Okay, especially in a traditionally male-dominated field like uh, the sciences and the engineering. Mm -hmm. there, there are far more bigger issues. And interesting enough, she mentioned the 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 whole point about the numbers. Yes. Now, I'll get to that. Now, it's part of one of those issues where you realize that, I mean, as part of issues or problems that that hinder the participation of women in the sciences, mm -hmm. you realize that a lot of women continuously have to deal with issues of harassment. Yes. Yes, sexual harassment. Mm, yes. Because, uh, in certain instances where you have supervisors, where supervisors are constantly... Uh, making advances. Mm, yeah, demands for sex as well. Exactly. So you turn them down and they make try to make your life a living hell. Yeah, that's true. And that's still true. speaking of that, uh, uh, and in relation to what she said about the numbers, I mean, a lot of the time, as a woman, I mean, imagine just being four in a number in a class of 40. What it means is that sometimes a lot of them are used as examples. Yes, yes. In, in the in, classes. In, in, in class inappropriate sexual, sexual examples. Sometimes you have a, le a, a lecturer turn around or a supervisor turn around and say, look, okay, someone answer sh uh, should answer this question and when you get the answer right, you probably get to go out on a date with Epiphania. These are all situations or uh, real problems a lot of girls in the sciences face. I face it. Yes, in uh, pursuing this, uh, you know, uh, this, uh, this area of endeavor. You know. I think one thing I find disturbing is, I mean, just with the example you gave, we actually put it on a humorous level. But it's not funny. That's the thing. People put it on a humorous level, but they don't get the seriousness of what they've just done. They don't get the implication. But we'll come back to that. Um, Mamiaba? Yeah. I mean, women in sciences. Mm -hmm. I think um, I will take it back. The reason why I believe most women don't venture into science mm -hmm. is like it has been by some unspoken rule, yeah. science and maths and engineering and all of those science-related subjects are subjects that are specifically for men. For men, left for the men, yeah. Left for the men, because um, listening to... Larissa. Listening yeah. to Larissa, she talked about how there were just two females in a class of about 40, and how her lecturers were just two. Yeah, as a, yes, the female lecturers were just, were just two, yes. And then they were like just four females in the class over 40, yeah. And then, because most women are venturing into science, there's no one for anyone to look up to. That's it's true. like, let's say I want to venture into science, mm -hmm. but I go to a school where I do not see female mm -hmm. teachers. I mean, you go to JSS, you go to SHS, all the teachers that teach science, maths are males. Most of them. 
Yes. So then who do I talk to about my interest in maths? Who do I talk to about my interest in science? Yeah, that's true. That's true. Well, we'll still keep on. Thank you. We'll come back to you guys again. We'll still keep on. We're listening to the interview. Well, that's that's an amazing thing. I mean, I think it's great that you actually um, decided to ensure if people would really be interested and you got the feedback that you wanted. Yes, and, and um, our action is to give voice to African women in STEM, but not just a voice, also to increase visibility of these women because um, the way we view things, or if you, let me just say that if you want to achieve something, or if you want to be something, um, it's very difficult to become that, that person if you can't visualize yourself as that person. And so um, it was very important for us at Levers and Heels to be able to provide these role models to younger generations um, so that they can identify themselves as, as African women in STEM. Wonderful. Now, um, we know when it actually comes to STEM, just like you mentioned, I mean, you actually had to first find out and, I mean, highlight these women because the whole STEM field is, is mainly male-dominated. So yes. how how would you assess the progress of female representation in STEM sectors across Africa? Okay. I think generally the participation of women and girls in STEM in Africa remains at the um, global average. And this is because of the the persistent gender gaps that continue to exist and exclude women and girls from achieving their potential and effectively contributing to development challenges. Um, there is obviously a lot of progress in uh, urban areas, but when you delve into rural areas, you still find out that there are so many girls out of school. Um, you find out that in a lot of homes, parents would rather take their sons to school and keep their girls at home to you know, handle home chores. And so it really is about, it's still about the mindset and um, perception of girls pursuing STEM. And I think that it really, we really need to start from the grassroots level and also at, in our homes, really encouraging parents to try and um, help and encourage their, their, girl, um, their female children to take on STEM roles. Usually they feel like STEM fields are a lot harder for women than for uh, their male counterparts. And it, it, it's not, it, it really, it's, it's really the opposite, actually. It's not difficult at all. And so we really need to encourage a lot more young women into STEM fields for progress to happen. That, that, well, we really need to encourage more young women into the progress field for the STEM to happen. We need to actually see a lot. Now, one thing she made mention was as she was speaking, I, I actually realize that she she made mention of the fact that in the urban centers it wasn't it wasn't like a new thing it wasn't difficult to get females into the stem field but in the rural centers it was difficult you barely find uh girls or women in the rural setting who are into these fields the lack of access the lack of opportunity the encouragement and lack of role models as well because i mean you go somewhere and someone is discouraging you. You don't even see, like Mama said, you don't see somebody who you look up to in the same field. So it's like you're the only one going to stand out from the crowd. Hafiz. Hmm. Anyway, uh, there's, there's a bit about gender gap she mentioned that I find very interesting. Now, more often than not, one of the problems that a lot of women face in, in the pursuit of science mm -hmm. is also the stereotypes or the tagging mm -hmm. of a woman that they are... They're they are emotional. Okay, you have, you know, their male colleagues often say this, these things about them. Oh, women are too emotional to work with and everything. Yeah. Now, the interesting thing about this tactic, the tactic is that it works. Because what it means is that once the person goes rogue, the women are too scared to call him to order because They'll they don't want to be tagged emotional. emotional. Yeah. So it often works. Now, there's also a bit about how, um, you know, uh, Mommy mentioned how, you know, the number of women probably at the excellence uh, mm -hmm. would probably en en encourage uh, the, young ones. the young ones coming mm -hmm. and looking up to them. But the sad bit about, you know, some of the, f or the few women that are actually up there and making it is, is that some of them are actually part of the problem. 
Yeah. Because a lot of the time, those that actually find themselves up there, mm-hmm. they 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 find it very hard to bring in the younger girls. Why? Because a lot of the time they are up there, they're only staying there because they are playing nice with the boys. The very day you, s- you start going against the boys' club, you get kicked out. Yeah. And so, before you know it, a lot of them start spewing all the misogynistic, you know, stuff that comes out of yeah. their the, the mouths of their male colleagues. And so, you have them there and they are staying there not because of their brilliance, but because they are basically pledging allegiance to so, a particular group. So, what, if, if I get so, you right, what you're trying to say is when, when they get to that point now, to be nice to or to be able to remain in the game, mm-hmm. they... Um, they actually had to just start playing the same cards with the guys. In a way, abandoning that streak of theirs, that uh, openness, the whole idea of the fact that we can also chat our own course, not necessarily toying that of the men or going on the course of the men. So it's like, I'm here now, so if I want to stay in the game, then you have to play by the boys' rules. So even if I have any idea that opposes what they're saying, or if I might, I believe that we can do it this way and it will work. But once the boys are against it, once the big men or people in the game who are keeping me in that circle are against it, I'm just going to keep quiet and go with them on the path. Therefore, it becomes difficult for them to actually encourage other young ones who want to be able to find themselves in the same field, right? Absolutely. Okay. Mommy? Yeah. I mean, she, she's talked about um, encu- providing role models and then encouraging females. Yeah. But I think the problem, especially in the rural areas, mm-hmm. is with the parents mm-hmm. and with the kind of mindsets that they, they have. have. Okay. Because a man is supposed to take care of the house. Yeah. So I would rather take my son to school than take my daughter to school. And somebody will say, oh, we're in the 21st century and all of these things are cake. And pe-. But no, some people actually have their values deep-rooted yeah. in the sense that irrespective of the century that we get to, there's no changing their mindsets. In fact, irrespective of the schooling they've had. Oh, yeah, and then there's that. So I think um, the education should start from the parents. Yeah. Tell them about how women can also venture into these areas and how a woman can also be the breadwinner of the family and how the sciences and schooling is not just for males. That's, I mean, that's by it. using examples of women who have, who have come out of yeah. rural areas, made it, um, been, who have been educated, done marvelous things for mm. themselves and for the world at large. You're still listening to the Africa Daily Show, and this is the Discussion Zone. We're continuing with our discussion. That is very true. You you actually mentioned in your submission that uh, you realized that with Eban, there's much of there's quite the representation, but when it comes to the rural areas, we don't see much. I just wanted to find out. Um, with Leavers and Hills, have you had any programs that are targeting those in the rural areas? So it's something that we we are looking at. Um, for now, we are focusing more on the visibility aspect and just providing a little more role models on our platform, so that young girls can can read and get inspired. Um, but we've done a bit of mentorship exercises with some schools in in Accra. Um, one with the Africa Science Academy at Tema. So it's a school solely for girls who are interested in taking on science. Um, related courses at the university level. Um, so I, I had the opportunity to speak to them about some of the women I had interviewed. Um, I actually had the opportunity to introduce them to some of the women that I had interviewed and just to speak about their career path so that they, they get to know that, look, it's possible for me to also become a woman in STEM. It's not a difficult thing to do. And so um, we, it's Speaking about the rural areas, it's something that we are looking to do um, in the long term. Wonderful. That's that's amazing. We believe that with the right partners, you'll be able to attain yeah. that. Yes. So um, with regards to, I mean, uh, countries that are actually doing particularly well, exceptionally well in the area of um, STEM, are there any that you've actually recognized or identified? And why would you say or what is making them do so well in the STEM when it comes to female representation in STEM in those countries? Okay, I think generally speaking, again, um, there isn't enough data to show that 
one country is doing better than another in terms of progress or advancing um, women in STEM within their countries and comparing them to other countries. But what I can say is that it's um, even across board, and um, this is based on um, the exceptional talents and exceptional women that I've had the opportunity to interview on, on levels of you. I, I, I think that a lot of women are so hidden, um, and that's why I think uh, representation and visibility is very important. Because once you 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 throw the light on what they are doing, other women start reading what they, they get inspired by by what they are doing, and then they come out of the they come into the light, you know. And so we need to encourage more of these women to share their stories, mm -hmm. because I believe that there are lots of women in STEM in Africa. It's just that they, they haven't been given the opportunity to share their stories. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, generally speaking, there isn't enough data. And um, it's one of the things that we are, we are also looking at at, at Levers and Hills to be able to do more research and collect that data uh, to find out which countries are progressing or far advancing in terms of uh, encouraging more women in STEM um, in, in their countries. That's true. That's that's very important. I mean, I think it's very important to actually know or realize when a child or a girl child has interest in the STEM field. Now, uh, one who be will be wondering, what can we do on a micro level to actually encourage such girls who are there that realize that oh, I do have an interest in science and technology, engineering, or in maths. Um, so on a personal level, uh, I remember being a child and seeing my dad fix things around the house. And my dad has always been a supporter and um, he's always encouraged me to take on STEM uh, courses. I mean, he encouraged me to, to study in engineering. And that's because he realized that I, I did really well in mathematics. And so he, he provided me with a lot of examples growing up and um, he made STEM seem like an everyday part of life and very practical. And so I think that we need to encourage more parents to, if, if they notice that uh, their children have an interest in STEM, so we need to encourage them to um, help foster that interest in them by making it an everyday part of life and practical, because STEM is not boring, and it's really an everyday part of life, you know. We also need to encourage more teachers to do the same. And in fact, we need to be able to get more female teachers in the system, because you realize that, um, and it's, it's rather unfortunate, I, I can give you a story of where I, I spoke to a young girl who wanted to study science mm -hmm. at the secondary level, and she was told to pursue arts instead. Well, her teacher actually told her that no, the science would be hard for her, so she would go on to pursue arts. But she had an that's discouraging. And so, it, yeah, exactly. So if if we we have more female role models and female teachers in the system, I think that would encourage a lot more girls to take on their roles and to um, not be afraid to pursue STEM courses. Well, yes, you've heard you've heard the voice of Larissa Akrofi, still the founder of Levers in Heels. Now, she's made quite some important points when we're looking at how to encourage young girls on the micro level who have a desire to venture into the STEM field. Hafiz. Yes, uh, thank you very much. Uh, she 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 revealed quite a lot. Uh, she actually even. Uh, related to 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 the whole question by mentioning how her upbringing was a huge part of yes. what she's doing now and i think it only goes to say that as a child i mean children do what they see you do they, they don't do what you tell them to do yeah so <laughs> that is that is super true so so that is just it uh, as a parent uh, you know and bringing up a child but then she also did go on to mention how uh, you know stem is not boring and i find that line very interesting because you see more often than not when they talk about the scientists even in the movies these are all messages they send to us even in the movies 
a girl in the sciences or engineering department is is usually portrayed as this nerdy girl in a lab coat that Very has nerdy. that has that has zero social life. Yeah. Yes, and I think it goes a long way to actually uh, imprint certain images about in our hearts. <laughs> what what a science girl is? Uh, yeah. A girl in the sciences is like, and and for me, it doesn't help. It doesn't help because I mean a lot of. A lot of it go, goes to show what exactly goes on uh, behind the scenes when it comes to, you know, trying to dismantle certain thinking, certain ideals. Now, I understand that it, some people also try or some institutions also try to dedicate certain positions mm -hmm. to women, mm -hmm. especially in the sciences, to help, you know, encourage, encourage other, those yes, coming. coming up. Yeah. Yes. Now, there's there's a good side to that, you know, strategy and there's a bad side. Mm -hmm. And the good side is, yes, well... W uh, the younger ones seeing them would definitely see someone to look up to. Mm -hmm. But the bad side of it is that, I mean, <laughs> look, any woman, uh, you know, uh, occupying such a position because uh, it was designated for a woman, only means she she it, it it was it was a position she got as a token of affirmative action. I don't know if I'm make, making sense. Yeah. Yes. So what it means is that she never really gets the respect. She but wants she from yeah. from uh, those around her, especially the male colleagues. They feel it's not a deserved one. So I think uh, there are issues uh, in there anyway. Okay, well, you heard it. There's issues in there. Oh, yeah, why did you mention my name like that? <laughs> well, let's go on. <laughs> okay, so um, I'd just like to top up to what Hafe said. I mm -hmm. mean, Larissa talked about how her dad used to... Um, um, I'm looking for her her when he was fixing no, things. How her dad involved her when he was fixing things yeah. and all of that, and I think that is what built her interest yeah. in engineering. So I think if first and foremost, if all dads could emulate that, it would be a good thing. I, I think mean, dads are moms as well. Moms don't really fix things, and well, I think there's there, some moms that fix things. You see, I that's, that's it. There, there's there's some moms that <laughs> fix this. You see, you see how this. I was going to say. <laughs> you see how this. I was going to say uh -huh. that is also one of the problems uh -huh. because I'm a young lady and I'm growing up. Mm -hmm. I'm a young girl. I'm growing up. I don't. I don't really see my mom fixing, fixing things. things around the house. So then so there's then that mentality that when I grow up, I'm not supposed to fix things. The man is supposed to a fix. Man is, it, that is a man's job. And I think that is something. I mean, if you're, if you're a mom mm -hmm. and you can fix things one or two times, you Keep should do it, it. Because kids, female kids usually look up to their moms. Exactly. Some exactly. look up to their dad, but most of them look up to their moms. Yeah. So I think if you're a mom and you can do that, you mm -hmm. could do like one or two things around the house. And then if your child has a, has an interest in it, you encourage them. Yeah. You know, sometimes men are try to do things, that try to do things, and their the child tries to help, and they're like, no, you get hurt. This is a man's job. That thing, that that thing just puts me off. Well, thank you so much for joining me on the discussion zone. Now, before we actually wrap it up, I'm actually gonna give you just uh, a couple of people, women actually, who are doing inspiring and outstanding things in the work of science just as we're marking the international day of women and girls in science so the first person is macy jamison and she was the first african-american female astronaut and also the first black woman in space when she actually served on the endeavor in 1992 along with six other astronauts we also have beatrice Schilling, and she's actually a motorcycle racer and, you know, she actually had her first motorcycle when she was just 14 years. But she was an aeronautical engineer and she ended up saving many lives because of her work. Also, we have Tu Yu Yu. And she studied traditional Chinese medicine and used it through that to find sweet wormwood and used it to treat intermittent fevers. And that, according to CNN, is actually a symptom of malaria. We also have Cecilia Payne Gaposkin, and she was expelled from high school at the age of 17, but she was the first person to discover the composition of stars. Trust me, if, if, if you love space, you'd actually see what, what actually works in it. Now, when she also discovered that hydrogen was more prevalent in the universe than the astronomy community thought at that time, though it was, many put to, it was difficult for put to believe because, I mean, this was a female graduate who couldn't necessarily have made the history for someone who was actually being expelled at a point in time. But then later on, science came to actually note that her discovery was also true. We also have Alice Ball, who was the first 
African-American woman to receive a master's degree from the University of Hawaii, but she was also the university's first female chemistry professor. And she was the person who developed a groundbreaking treatment for leprosy. So trust me, there are amazing women out there who are doing amazing things. But don't forget, you can also contribute and send more. If you know more women who are doing great things in the field of science, you can send it to us on Africa Global Radio on Facebook or www. Just go to the website and then leave a comment there for us. 